Um, so I'm Luca Nussbaum, and I will talk about uh, basically quality assurance. So first, I have to apologize. As you are, might have seen, uh, DebConf is great because you can discover a lot of different English variants. So you discovered Jerglish, Italish, Spaglish. Spaglish is tomorrow, I think. And today, we discover Friendlish, which is the worst of all. So good luck with understanding me. OK, at the end of the ads release cycle, uh, we did quite a lot of QA. Uh, we rebuilt the archive several times, and we ran a few parts on the whole archive several times. So this resulted in about 200 RC bugs filed and fixed in Edge. Uh, such tests such test are, I think, a good thing, because they allow to give the same level of attention to all packages in Debian. And not only to rely on humans to find bugs, um, they also uh, allow to avoid regression. And maybe the most important is to keep maintainers busy so they, they know that we are going to release Edge and that they, there are bugs to fix. But uh, as the release manager said, such tests were run too late in the release process. They, called, they caused some package to miss Edge. Many, bugs, many, many package are RC bugs against them and then which were unfixed and then they missed edge, which is a shame. And lots of things were untested. So we need to be more efficient and organized during the Lenny release cycle to avoid, that, to avoid all of that. So in the first part, I will describe uh, two kinds of tests. For those who, were, who attended my first demo talk, it will be quite the same. But then it will be more interesting, I think. So the first, well, yeah, so there are several kinds of QA tests that you can do. First example is to rebuild packages from source. Second example is to run few parts. And there are also other tests like, like Lintian or Linda, but I don't know them very well, so I won't talk about them. So first, rebuilding packages. The problem is that uh, when you upload a package, it's, a, it's built, and it's never built again. And packages with architecture all in their control files are only built on the developer's machine. So after the package is uploaded to Debian, the build environment changes. There are new or older compiler versions. Uh, build, older in the case uh, when the package migrate to testing and <coughs> the GCC in testing is older than the one in stable. That can happen. Uh, build dependency might not be available anymore. They are not used for by, by Brutne for testing propagation. So this leads to problem because everyone should be able to build your package. That's important, for example, for security updates. So that, so there are several tools to rebuild packages. The first one is pbuilder. Who uses pbuilder? Yeah. Who doesn't? Okay. And so pbuilder builds the package inside a shoot. It's very easy to use, and you should use it if you are not, but you are, you are all using it. And there's a talk about it on Saturday afternoon, I think. Uh, then there's sbuild. So sbuild is the name of the software used on buildies. But it, there's also a Debian, a Debian package, which is derived from that code base. It relies on shoot, so it's a bit harder to set up, but it's much more powerful once it's set up. <coughs> Uh, so another QA test is PewParts. Who use who, who know Pew, Who doesn't know PewParts? Doesn't okay. So PewParts is a tool to test in the installation removal of packages. Uh, basically, it installs a package in a clean Debian system with nothing. Uh, well, there's just apt and uh, debfoster installed in the shoot when it installs the package, so it allows to check. If it's mainly to, to check the maintainer script that is postinst, for example, it's that all the that everything you use in postinst is installed. Few parts also allow to test other things like upgrades. <coughs> uh, can test for running processes after the package removal and other stuff. So now we we'll describe a few problems that I ran into while doing this test. So the first one is that 
rebuilding packages takes a lot of time. It takes about 10, day, 10 days if you, use, if you use a single computer. Most, most packages are very fast to build. For example, 90% um, of packages built under, in uh, less than uh, 100 seconds. But there are some packages that take a very long time. That's not much surprise. The second one generates fonts. That's why it takes so long. So when I, when I rebuilt the archive, I did it on a, an HPC grid. So I ran to a problem. I could use 100 nodes if I wanted. But I, can, I can't because OpenOffice takes too long. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's useless to use more than 40 nodes because the, uh, the total time will be bound by the time taken to build OpenOffice. And it's even worse, worse now because Open of, the new version of OpenOffice of Open Office in Unstable builds in about 10 hours now. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have multi cores, we have dual core laptops. <laughs> because most, most builds only use one CPU. Uh, so it would be nice to have a common interface to say to the package, to the, to the Debian rules, that it should use several CPUs while building. So there's a bug against Debian policy. So the number is right. It starts with two. So it's, it was filed a very long time ago. And basically, if you read the bug, the bug log, everybody agrees that, it should, that, should be something, that there should be something like that. There are two proposals. And it's a bit like the red bag shed problem. Everybody agrees for either one of the other, but nobody decides. And so it would be great if uh, the policy guys would wake up and decide something so we can just implement that in packages that, are, that need that. And for example, there is uh, build times of Linux 2.6. We already provide an interface to build as, uh, with using several CPUs. So on a quad-core system, see that the speed up is really good. You, you go from uh, about five hours to uh, one hour and a half. So that's really worth it. And it's not for all packages, only for the ones that would benefit from that, of course. So another problem is few parts and false positives. So when you run few parts on the world archive, you get tons of false positives. Uh, most of them are well. Most of them are no, you, are, you can't do anything about that because they're just packages that, for example, require MySQL to be installed and configured before you install the package. So there's nothing to do about that. But uh, there are still some packages that install non-interactively that don't allow to, to be installed non-interactively. That is, I prompt the user using uh, read, for example, in bash. So debconf is nice, because when a package uses debconf, you can use the non-interactive front end. But it doesn't solve everything. For example, packages that need access to the database, well, that's what I just said. So there's a policy bug against in the starting with two. Uh, that that would like to make all packages use debconf except the, the packages marked essential because those ones cannot depend on debconf. And uh, this bug log has been uh, quiet for about uh, one or two years, I think. So that would be a nice uh, release goal for Lenny, maybe. So few parts. Well, there's a lot of things to do about few, about few parts. Uh, first, it's supposed to be maintained collaboratively, but there, have, there, been, there have, have not been a lot of activity on that. Um, there is also a, a, a donated system called piatidebian.org, which could be used to run tests. So if you are interested in that, just contact those who maintain a uh, few parts, and they can give you access, and you can, get, you can help develop few parts. Because uh, for now, using QPATS, I only uh, filed bug about uh, problem during installation and removals. I haven't tested upgrades. I haven't tested uh, file, files left after removal. There are lots of things to do with QPATS. Okay. 
So, no, I have a question for you. Uh, is the John maintainer or the web calendar maintainer here? Okay, that's good. <laughs> so, as, does somebody know what they have in common? No idea? Okay, I can help you. They were both in charge and they are currently in unstable. Both, has, both are, are useful. I, I use both of them. No idea? Well, no, no, none of them are in edge, actually. Both of them are an, had an RC bug that was fixed during, after the freeze, before the release, but the maintainer forgot to ask for an unblock. So they, they are left behind, not in edge. Many packages actually missed the release. Um, after, no, just before Edge was released, we looked at packages <coughs> that were unstable at the time of the freeze in December, may, uh, maybe 10 days before because, because of the um, testing propagation delay. And uh, we looked at those that were not included in Edge, that is all those who weren't able to get into Edge. Um, so that, that's 433 packages, and in many cases, the package is fine, it could be in Edge, but there was, for some reason, the maintainers forgot to request an unblock, so it couldn't get from unstable to testing. So there are lots of example bugs for that. So I think that we really need a way to keep maintainers informed about uh, the shape of our packages. So there's DDPO, of course, but which is really nice and very, very useful, but only if you use it. And who, you, who, really, who regularly uh, read his DDPO page? Who doesn't? <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm? Well, one of them, one of you did. <laughs> so ideally, uh, everybody would use it as start page, but some maintainers don't. I don't understand why. Maybe, <laughs> well, no, I, I understand. So. The idea I'd like to propose today is to send one monthly email about, to each maintainer with the most important information about his package. It's not, the goal is to avoid spamming the maintainer. We are, my idea is to only send a mail when there's a problem and when the problem is an important one. Like uh, open RC bugs, packages that are not in testing, and maybe, but even that I'm not so sure about it, important, important bugs filed with a, with, well, which are tagged patch. So we, this would be, of course, uh, opt-out, but it can't be opt-in because maintainer wouldn't subscribe to it, so it would be useless if maintainers. Oh, just another poll. Who subscribes to the PTS for his package? Oh, quite a lot. Okay. <coughs> Because I tried today and I uh, ran into quite a lot of issues. <laughs> uh, so there, there would be an, an in your mechanism. So you could say, OK, this bug is a dummy bug just to prevent uh, testing propagation. I don't want to hear about that. So I've already done some work on that. And basically, well, I imported uh, the BTS metadata to uh, Postgres, PostgresDB. But I used uh, bug scan as a base, and there are bugs I have to fix first. Not in bug, uh, not in bug scan in my code. <laughs> so I used I finally used BTS .net as a source for the list of RC bugs, and I computed the testing status for all packages. That is, uh, for how long a package have been in uh, have not been in testing, because uh, the numbers on the BTS are wrong actually. So I'm ready to send mails, but I'm still not sure about that. Uh, should I do that? Or not? Okay, so um, QA tasks used to be done by motivated individuals. Uh, some people talk about a QA team. There's really not a big active QA team like there's a KDE team, for example. Um, and I think that working as a team would help a lot, would bring, bring more fun, and it's also it's more scalable, which is really important when you have to maintain, when you have to take care of uh, 13,000 packages. So there's a project on iOS called, called Collab QA, uh, which can be used to share results about QA tests, like rebuilds of the archive or run of QParts. 
And to keep the results for history, which is important, so you can get an idea of how the quality of Debian evolves. And it makes things much more fun and efficient, I think, than before. So I have a quote from Luna. <laughs> really enjoyed the reporting uh, <laughs> FTBFS. Um, so inside that project, we already worked on packages that missed Edge, even if that is not finished yet. Uh, we worked on several arch archive rebuilds since even after the release of Edge, and currently we are up to date until the 14th of June for the ex well, all, all build failures except the, uh, the unsatisfiable dependencies one have been failed. So that's about uh, 400 or 500 uh, RC bugs actually. Um, someone is working on file conflicts between packages and that there are plans to restart run of runs of few parts. And also for any ID that you can have that is uh, that's, that you find it that you find interesting. For example, the double build uh, tests that were done by uh, with an ID from uh, Martin Zobel was not done inside Colab QA, but we are open to other to other ideas of this kind. So don't they say to join to join that project? <laughs> so to conclude. Let's make QA work for Lenny. Let's make Lenny higher quality than Edge was. Uh, please join the Collab QA team and help. So currently, all discussions happen either on IRC on Debian QA or on the Debian QA mailing list. So if you subscribe to the mailing list, you should be well informed. Um, and now I have two questions, two, two questions for you. The first one is, uh, what do you think of that DDPO by mail ID? Do you think I should send those mails? Because that's about, actually, I started with um, quite um, low um, um, my criteria for the first mail are quite low. That is, the package has to be out of, test, out of testing for alpha year, and it must have bu bugs open uh, RC bugs open for more than 30 days, and <coughs> even with that, I get uh, 280 maintainers to mail. That is 280 maintainers that have at least one package in this state. So that's a lot. And I can't reduce that number much. And the other question is, um, what about a team or working on packages in a questionable state? Because that was right during the, the uh, 15,000 packages buff this morning. So we could have a discussion about that as well. So the, the idea is that we have too many packages. Many of, we have a lot of packages. Many of them are not useful anymore, or just uh, there in the archive without using, without, yeah, they could be removed. And we have no way currently to tell, OK, this package could be removed. OK, so what do you think? <coughs> So on your first question, um, I'd like to suggest a show of hands. So who thinks that this DDPO by mail is a good idea? Uh, okay. And um, so does anybody think it's a bad idea? Okay. Uh, who, who thinks that the criteria that Lucas was suggesting are very generous to the maintainers? <laughs> well, the problem is that we aren't really representative of the whole Debian developers. So, I, well, we'll probably be, I'll probably get flamed, but okay, so be there to <laughs> counterattack. <laughs> okay, so I'll do that. And what do you think of the archive state? Do you think we should work on that, or do you think it's okay to? <laughs> maybe on the, maybe on the first, hello? Okay, maybe on the first question, uh, maybe it's an idea to send a mail to DDA first, uh, announcing that you're going to send uh, to send these mails, yeah. and also provide a place where people can actually read what kind of mails are being mm. sent out. Simply generate them and put them in some directory. Mm. Then you can preempt any questions, or just do it. Okay. 
So in, in terms of repository-wide QA, there is currently a note on the lintian.debian.org page that says don't do mass bug filings based on lintian tags because the lintian maintainers will periodically do that. Well, the lintian maintainers are not periodically doing that. Uh, speaking as one of the active lintian maintainers, uh, I don't really have time. So if someone would like to volunteer to go explore lintian tags on the lintian.debian.org site, see which ones might be worth mass bug filings and proceed to go and do that, I think that would be great. Uh, it picks up a lot of pretty obvious problems and it picks up a lot of fairly major problems that uh, you know that I'm, I think the maintainer may just not be aware of. Uh, though it is worth pointing out that not all of the problems that Lintian does throw up are uh, serious problems so I think uh, Debbie and Lintian is pretty happy to uh, take questions on uh, whether something is actually relevant. Um, on a personal comment, like it's been great fun to actually uh, feel FTBFS bugs. Uh, sorry for those like who has received true and false positive. Um, yeah, there have been some false positive with like Python packages, but I think um, it's it's really something like this. Uh, the problem, the main problem, is that you rebuild the whole archive and you get like. 600 uh, build logs to review and, and that's where like uh, Lucas has a problem and has to ask hey I need help now that I've rebuilt all that thing in, in eight hours with this huge grid of uh, distributing computing and, and so um, it's, it's, it was very easy to jump in I mean like uh, it takes maybe three or four minutes per, per build logs uh, sometimes I did a few checks by myself like try not to get too much full positive, but still, but it, it, it was really something I could do, I don't know, I had like half an hour to kill, okay, I'm going to do like review uh, uh, 10 or 20 build logs in that time, and it, it, it was great fun to do that together, and I mean, like anyone, everyone can, can, can jump, jump in. Yeah, I think that's an important point, that uh, reviewing logs is something that you can do when you just, just feel bored and you have 30 minutes to lose, it's, you don't have to dedicate uh, four hours to that. Just do 30 minutes. You can still review probably uh, 10 bugs for, for 10 failures. Maybe it's file, 10, file 10 RC bugs if you are lucky. And uh, yeah, that, that, would, that helps a lot. About the build logs, I'm wondering in what way, in how far can these build logs be analyzed somewhat automatically? Is there some, some common problems that you can maybe filter out? Somebody was or doing that, I think. Somebody was doing that for certain common, common problems like uh, warnings for unsigned versus signed mismatches. So then I heard Dan Frazier is uh, has done some work on that. Yeah, he's filtering build logs for IA64. Okay. Oh yeah, now I recall having seen that somewhere. So maybe it's an idea to um, centralize the, this code that analyzing code somewhere on Collab QA, for example, mm -hmm. so that um, yeah we can see in what way the, the workload can be reduced uh, by filtering out some of the common problems. Of course, uh, a lot of things are going to be manu need to be manually checked because not all failures are the same. Well, for removing uh, build logs, we're already quite. We already have quite a good workflow. I think we are workflow. I think we are we have quite efficient uh, at, at that. But there's place for improvement. But we are quite good at that now. It doesn't take a lot of time to rebuild, to review them. So I'm wondering if, um, let's say, I have an idea that I want to test, like by building the whole archive or um, digging into the whole archive of available dot dead. And I would have no idea to, of where to start for building the whole archive and just assuming that I have the needed hardware. So do we have, you have sorry? Uh, the needed hardware? Mm. So do we have tools which can be used easily by normal maintainers to try a full rebuild of the archive or something similar? Well, the problem is that uh, I have scripts to do, to do this, but that's quite specific to the platform I'm using, so you can't really take them. It, it would be useless to use, to use them as well. But SBuild is really good, and you can just wrap around SBuild and 
basically mass script mass script just do that so Another point is that, uh, well, Luca is available, and uh, if you need a rebuild in specific conditions, just uh, mail him, explain him how to do this build, and he will do it for you. And then you have lots of build logs that you can uh, analyze. I just did that for the new DPKG SHLib depth stuff, and uh, well, you can make sure that your new development is going to work on the whole archive, and that you don't break anything. So, really use it. Uh, either to file bug or to test new development. It's, it's cool. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, that's true. But basically, if, if you can provide me with a patched S build that does what you want, that's perfect. Okay. But even if you don't, I can still... Uh, <laughs> but please don't come to me with just uh, silly ideas uh, and... Uh, <laughs> First test for, no, for example, if you test on uh, 100 packages, it still shows that it already shows that it's a good idea. Uh, quick uh, advertisement because we scheduled the buff really late. There is a Lintian buff uh, Saturday, uh, 2 p.m. Um, there's currently only two people signed up for it, one of which is me. So um, I, because it just got scheduled today, but everyone is certainly invited to come talk about Lintian. Um, there's another thing that I'd like to mention. Um, so I've been doing some stuff for Canonical which involves um, having functional tests in packages. Now we don't really have any packages with functional tests, um, but the idea is eventually that we'll be able to um, install every package and actually check to see whether the installed version works at all after you've done that. Um, and there's an interface for that. It's called auto package test. And um, I'm hoping to be able to be running that on Debian on a regular basis fairly shortly. Uh, my hardware's a bit stuffed at the moment, but um, I'm expecting that to be fixed in the next month or so. And after that, you'll be able to get your package automatically functionally tested. And all you have to do is um, glue a very small amount of test into the, into the directory according to the spec I've written. Well, I, have a, I have a question for you actually because about this testing thing, I think that it's a really, really good idea. But I'm wondering why it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm wondering why it quite failed to get uh, wide acceptance. Uh, there aren't a lot of packages using it currently. Why it failed to what? To to get wide acceptance uh, amongst the DD in Debian. Um, uh, well, basically because at the moment nobody is running these tests, so yeah. uh, I've not been able to go to, to okay. maintainers and say, hey, look, I plumbed this test in mm. and, and get a bit of okay. you know push adoption uh, because the the <laughs> it's difficult to sell it mm. given that at the moment it doesn't really do very Makes much. Makes sense. <laughs> How many packages are using it? So Sorry. How many packages are using it currently? Um, just the about two packages that are used as test cases. Okay. So it really is yeah. nowhere. Okay. Which two? So people. The one of the packages is Mork, and um, the other one was something that the Ubuntu uh, security team um, had some tests for that they already had. Um, so I'm afraid I can't remember the name. Yeah, I think it was. It was Dovecot. Do you have any CA? Um, well, as I say, my hardware's a bit stuffed at the moment. This is going to be unstuffed very soon because it needs to, it's on the critical bar for lots of other things. I'm hoping to be able to r be running it on the archive, on the Debian archive, probably on testing, um, sometime, starting sometime in the next month, maybe. A bit more on the uh, self-testing packages. There are some packages that actually do a self-test, do running a test suite when they build. And we should include that. One problem I've had with uh, some packages that are written for i386, when you uh, introduce the uh, self-test later on, it uh, often fails on some architectures. Gnash is an example. Uh, I tried to convince uh, Miriam to enable it by default and make it a fatal error. But um, it's a bit late to do it when it's already built on all the architectures and half of them start to fail and then it stops propagating into testing. Um, how can we actually handle these test cases where some architectures were never actually intended to work with the program and they are still in the archive and 
it's a real pain to get the FTP masters to drop the architectures and get the package into testing. Uh, I think if, uh, if a package is not actually working, then that's a perfectly legitimate reason for it not to be in testing. It's, uh, you know, if, if, the, if, the, if the devs are stuffed, if they're, okay, if there are minor problems that don't really affect the core functioning of the package, that's one thing, but in many cases this is just that uh, it's completely broken on that architecture. And I think having to cope with uh, either fixing it or getting FTP master to remove it is okay in that case. Right, right. So it I, is some work. I, I certainly agree with what Colin said. Also, um, I'm trying to do post hoc testing, and that does mean that you don't discover it before the package is built, but it also means that if something in the package's dependencies causes that package to no longer work, you will discover it. Um, so uh, Debian has pretty high quality standards anyway, and um, the regression late rate is generally quite low. So I'm hoping that testing packages after they've been built and put into testing is a useful thing to be doing um, because the failure rate at that stage will be low enough um, that you won't regret very much catching these problems at that late stage. But then you get the problem of uh, being able to test enough package so that it makes sense. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem. So. No other comments? Okay, so I think we can all go have dinner. <laughs>